There are about two dozen different clans in Vanguard, and it can be kind of difficult to choose which clans kind of work for what you want to play, and which ones wouldn't fit you at all. So what I'm going to be doing is talking about each individual clan to give you a feeling for which ones you might like and which ones you should avoid. And naturally, I'm going to be starting this list with my personal favorite clan, the Shadow Paladins. So you might be asking what Shadow Paladins are. Well, as far as lore-wise, they are basically the secret underground uh, shadow government of the uh, Vanguard world in the United Sanctuary. While most clans in this region are known for their justice and peace and all that garbage that no one needs, this clan is powerful. They will give up whatever they need to to get their goals completed. They have units that are dark knights, mages, witches, wizards, dragons, any animal you can really think of that would basically tear you apart as well. It's just a really cool group of units. And if you want to be playing this clan, you should look for the Ren Suzukamori Trial Deck, as well as the Strongest Team AL4 Booster Box. And you should definitely want to be playing this clan. It's one of the strongest in the game right now in Standard. And a large reason for that is that while many clans are kind of good at one or two specific things, Shadow Paladins are just good at everything. And what I mean by that is that by sacrificing their own units, or by playing into the synergies that are presented by the cards, you can make some really amazing things happen. It's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, except it's really good at all of the trades. Things that might attract you to the Shadow Paladin clan are the ability to retire your opponent's unit and have general field control. Having a pretty much built-in draw engine, as well as a mechanic to unflip your damage. Being able to swing for massive numbers and sacrificing your units to make really cool plays. Now, it does have a little bit of a drawback in each of these categories. For example, when looking to retire units, they will always give the opponent the option of which will go. This is kind of a weird mechanic, but it fits into their whole controlling and manipulating theme. Making an opponent get rid of their favorite cards or their most powerful units is just this dark, twisted view of the game. It's so different than Kagro just saying, I want that guy gone, get him out of here. That being said, most times the sheer magnitude of sacrifices the opponent will have to actually give up make them just lose all their units anyways. But we'll get a good feeling for what this clan can do as we talk about all the different cards which are available in their current form. And to fully understand this clan, we should probably start at the top by discussing their two different boss units. Now, the first card you're going to be wanting to look at when discussing the Shadow Paladin clan is the Dark Dictator. This comes from the Ren Suzukimori Trial Deck, and it's a really powerful card. To begin with, it has the Force Marker, which allows you to hit some pretty big rows. On top of that, it has a continuous ability, which gives you 2,000 attack power for each rearguard you have, making this unit be able to swing essentially up to 33k on its own if you give it the Force Marker. And if one big attack isn't really enough for you, we can always add a second one with its other ability, which is a 1 per turn act ability, allowing you to counterblast one and call a grade 2 or lower unit from your hand. This unit gets 5,000 extra attack power, as well as forces your opponent to sacrifice one of their rearguards, essentially giving you a stronger attack while controlling your opponent's board and limiting what they can do in retaliation. Of course, that's not the only main unit that Shadow Paladins have access to right now. They also have Phantom Blaster Dragon. Again, this card gives a force marker when you ride it, but it has a very different playstyle. Instead of calling units from your hand to bolster your field, you will instead sacrifice three of your units this time for a counter blast of one, giving your vanguard 15,000 attack and a critical. But it doesn't quite end there. On top of that, your opponent will be forced to sacrifice three of their own units as a result, meaning you're basically getting a big buff for losing the same resources as them. You'll kind of appreciate that this neg on your side really isn't as big a deal as we discussed the grade 1s and 2s, but we'll get to that later. Now, a really cool thing about this ability is that it can be used more than once, meaning if you're playing against an Excel clan, you can pop the effect two or even three times if you need to, swing for a massive number, and sometimes just win the game off it. And if you don't, they have nothing on their field. Of course, you want to be at least a little bit aware of your opponent's perfect guard situation before you load this attack off, because it can just stop your whole plan in its tracks. That being said, once you do blow up your opponent's board, if you want to get some damage off, you can just do it. By Soul Blasting a Grade 3, you can force your opponent to take 1 damage if they have no rear guards, putting them up to a total of 5 damage. And of course, you can only use this ability once per turn, because otherwise it would be a little bit busted. But altogether, this Vanguard's amazing at limiting your opponent's field while pushing them to the brink of 5 damage. 
Once they're at 5, I do like to switch back to Dark Dictator for more reliable large numbers. Finally, there is a third grade 3 which is often run in the Shadow Paladin clan, and that is Dark Mage Bahabkar. This is another Force unit which is kind of strange, I don't think it particularly needs it. However, because of its ability to give you a Force Marker, you can ride this if you need to and not really fall behind in your game plan. Super cool. Now beyond this, it has the ability of a 1 per turn act, which allows you to Soul Blast 1 and look at the top card of your deck. This card can either go onto your field with a 5k boost, and if it does, you will have to retire it at the end of your turn, or you can just throw it in your graveyard if you don't want it. That being said, it's a pretty great way to get off Phantom Blaster Dragon's abilities, as the card is just going to die it anyways. Beyond this, there are plenty of grade 1s and 2s which have amazing on-call abilities, and it's a great way to just win the game through advantage. It's basically a pseudo draw which allows you to gain advantage and push for big numbers. Pretty solid. Now if the grade 3s weren't quite enough to win you the game, you do have three amazing grade 2s. Typically the starting point to any Shadow Paladin deck will be the Blaster Dark. This is a grade 2 unit with the ability on play counter blast 1, force your opponent to sacrifice one of their units. It's just pretty solid board control, it's cheap and it's pretty effective. But on top of that, it has the ability on Vanguard that if your opponent has no rear guards, you can discard a card and gain Twin Drive. You kind of go even in this situation, but it allows you to kind of correct your hand if you need to. For example, if you have too many grade 3s, you can ditch one and get something that allows you to be a bit more offensive or defensive next turn instead. Or if you have no grade 3s, you can kind of go fishing and hope for a new one. But let's say you're really stuck and you could use some more card draw to really get you there. Well. Here comes Darkness Maiden Maka, or Macha, however you really want to pronounce it, it's probably fine. Macha has the ability Act Once Per Turn. You can Counter Blast 1 and call a Grade 1 or lower unit from your hand. On top of that, Macha gains 5,000 attack, and you draw a card. So basically, you're getting a card for playing a card, meaning you're going to go even, and you get a power boost. It's pretty solid. And again, keep Macha in mind when we reach the Grade 1s, as a lot of their on-call abilities are pretty goddamn good. Altogether, you have a bunch of cards so far which allow you to develop board state while you're basically going even in hand. It's even better when you take into account Tragic Knight Cathbat. This is another Grade 2 unit with the ability of gaining 3,000 attack for each rearguard you have more than your opponent. So basically, if your opponent has no rearguards and you have all five, you're swinging for 25,000 on your own. That is massive, and it can really force out a lot of the perfect cards that stop Phantom Blaster Dragon from being a great card. Now I should probably mention there is another grade 2 that some people play, I don't see it around too much, but it's enough that I had to mention it, and that's Blaster Rapier. This is a 9k attacker, which is a bit low for a Force Clan, however it does get a 5,000 boost if you do have 3 Blaster units on the field. This includes your Vanguard and itself. So pretty good. On top of that, if it does hit a vanguard, you have the ability of counter blasting one, and your opponent has to sacrifice one of their units. It's an effective removal, adds a lot of pressure, and while it's not as big as Cathbad, I can understand running it. It's just a little bit weaker for my taste. So moving on to the grade ones, we have what's really the heart and soul of the deck. Starting off, we have Black Sage Sharon. So Sharon's an 8k unit, and when it's played from hand through an ability, or from deck in, in uh, Kar's case, you can Soul Blast 1 and unflip a damage. This allows you to keep your combos going and force your opponent to sacrifice more units, and it's just a great control tool. On top of that, when you're playing it with Macha's effect, you basically go positive. You're basically just playing a Soul Blast to draw a card and get a power boost. The other extremely powerful grade 1 that Shadow Paladins have access to is Skull Witch Namain. While this unit only has 5,000 attack, it's Crazy. Just resting this unit, which you can only do once per turn across all units of the same name, allows you to look through your deck for any unit with 5,000 attack and call it onto the field. You can pull another in the main, you can pull a trigger if you really need a sacrifice, or whatever else you need. But basically, even if you're on first play, you can play in the main, call, this, uh, call another in the main, the next turn you call another one, and on your grade 3 turn you call another one, meaning you have three units to sacrifice for the cost of playing one card. It's super powerful. It allows you to get a lot of advantage, and it's basically a play one, draw three. A smaller detail that I can probably mention here is that it also deck thins, and you're not going to be drawing into the main if you pull her out this way. Small thing, but it can make a difference. The next unit we're going to talk about is Blaster Javelin. When you play it, you have the ability to counter blast one. 
If you have another grade one or less unit on your field, you can draw a card and Blaster Javelin gets a 3000 attack boost. Again, allowing you to develop a board without losing hand state. The final grade one that I run personally is Blaster Dagger. This is another 8k unit, and when you attack with it or boost with it and it hits a vanguard, you can slide it to soul, and your opponent's forced to sacrifice one unit. It's basically the pressure of Blaster Rapier, except there's a bit of, uh, a bit of flexibility in the ability to boost other cards. I wouldn't say this is a staple to the deck, but I do run it because, again, it's a bit of extra pressure, and putting it behind uh, Cathbad allows you to swing for massive numbers that they have to protect. The final grade one we're going to talk about is Witch of Nostrum Aryan Road. While it's not super common to see, I just felt I should probably bring it up because it does have some good synergies in the deck. Resting this unit allows you to Soul Blast one and give another unit on your field 10,000 attack power. While that does not exactly change the game state too drastically, it does allow you to basically boost a unit on your field while still sacrificing her for Phantom Blaster Dragon and not losing that power boost. Again, not a great card, but it's good enough that I wouldn't be upset if I saw someone playing it, you know? So what are the strengths and weaknesses of this deck overall now that we've kind of looked at the pieces? So strengths. Ability to retire your opponent's units. A good draw mechanic. Powerful and consistent unflipping mechanic. Big numbers all the time. Forcing damage. Great synergy between your cards. And it's just all around a super effective deck, which you're going to win a lot of games with. And if you're playing against Excel clans, a lot of the time you can just win by making them exhaust their resources. Now, what it struggles with is protect clans predominantly. Uh, things like Dark Regular and especially Oracle Think Tank will screw you. A big thing to deal with this is to spread out your force triggers. I would put one on your vanguard to start with and then spread them out from there. This kind of builds a situation where your opponent is forced to use multiple uh, protect trigger, uh, protect gifts each turn and that can kind of help you mitigate their ability to stop your big burst. A card you do want to look out uh, for specifically in Oracle Think Tank is Promise Daughter. This is a grade 2 with the ability to not get retired by opponent's card effects. So if you play Blaster, uh, Blaster Dark, counter Blast 1, and force them to choose which one to sacrifice, they choose Promise Daughter and nothing happens. On top of that, if you use Blaster, uh, Phantom Blaster Dragon, sacrifice 3, and they can choose Promise Daughter for one of those, leaving, meaning they only have to sacrifice 2 units while you lost 3. It's kind of a weird thing to play against because it can completely stop your uh, whole game plan, basically. So the last thing I want to show you is just my typical Shadow Paladin deck list. It's pretty standard as far as I know. Um, my grade 1 lineup and trigger lineup is kind of wonky. Um, I actually think I bumped it up to 7 draw triggers, 5 crits. Just playing around with things a little bit more just before I head up to Toronto Regionals for this weekend. Uh, I'll let you know how that goes eventually, or I might do an update video with that. But um, yeah take a look at the deck try it out and let me know what you guys think uh, you can let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more content like this uh, if you want to see different things on top of that with this video I should have a couple more up as well for the channel opening one of which being a case opening in which I open 20 boxes of cards something to kind of kick off the start of this channel so if you enjoy all of that or you want to take a look make sure you subscribe and like the video for more content uh, until next time thank you for coming to Miracle Trigger and I'll see you in the next video.